Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Last week we did a video looking at how Plex works with a bunch of different TV boxes for higher end content, namely some of the 4K Blu-ray content that you might want to consume off your server. And in that video we looked at a box's ability to switch into 24p mode to get the right HDR mode selected and then of course pass lossless audio to your home theater receiver. And there was only one player that could do all of that perfectly, which was the NVIDIA Shield, with the Xbox being a close second. And we talked a lot about the Apple TV in that video, and at the time I recorded it, the new one wasn't out yet, but now the new one is, and I picked one up over the weekend. My wife dragged me out furniture shopping, and I happened to be near an Apple store, so I swung by and picked up this new unit. I will have a review of this coming up very shortly, and this, as you'll see, is the Ethernet version because now the lower cost option does not have an ethernet jack on it. So I went with the 128 gigabyte version to get the ethernet. And what I thought I would do is just update the testing that we did on the old one to see if there are any improvements here with the new one. And you'll recall the biggest issue we had with the old one was that it didn't properly pass the lossless audio over to the home theater receiver. And we'll see if this one fares any better in this review. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Plex is a sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. And I paid for the Apple TV here with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing or approving this before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this Apple TV fares with the Plex test that we did last week. Now, if you were hoping this new box would enable some lossless audio pass-through, unfortunately, that is not the case. Just like the old versions, it will do the LPCM conversion here, which means that you're not going to get that direct pass-through out of your files on your Plex server like you would with the NVIDIA Shield. Like the old versions, you can go in here and try to change the audio format, but it's only going to allow you to select Dolby Digital or Stereo when you do that. So there is, again, no way to get the direct pass-through of audio, which is what we really need to make this work. Now what I thought I would do is show you some of the statistics screens that my receiver reports when things are getting passed over to it. And a little bit earlier I booted up The Mandalorian on Disney Plus just to show you what it looks like when we're using a streaming service. And you can see my receiver picked up the Atmos tag here and was properly getting the audio coded in that way even though it was LPCM coming over and it enabled my two upward firing speakers there as you can see. But when you run a 4K Blu-ray file with an embedded lossless Dolby True HD Atmos soundtrack, you'll see my receiver is not picking up the Atmos tag, my two upward firing speakers are not activating, and all it's seeing is 7.1 channel PCM. Additionally, if I go over to my Plex Stash app on my phone to see what my server is doing, my server was actually doing uh, some transcoding of the audio to FLAC before it sent it over to the Apple TV. So clearly here, unfortunately, the new Apple TV is not capable of sending lossless audio as a pass-through to the receiver, which has been the problem with these boxes all along. I think hardware-wise it's capable of it, but based on how Apple handles audio, we're not going to be able to see it working the way we want in Plex, even though other forms of Atmos audio that you might find on a streaming service do work. And of course, the target market for these devices are people that are using streaming services. We are certainly not the uh, biggest user base for the Apple TV, so I don't expect any changes to happen in this area anytime soon. But the Apple TV is properly handling the video, so my television did switch into Dolby Vision mode. And as you can see here from my receiver, it was passing through a 24p video signal at 4K, which is good. But again, the audio is the issue. I did want to show you what my receiver looks like when the NVIDIA Shield is playing something back, though. And what the NVIDIA Shield does is it just passes the audio direct through to the receiver. So it receives the data from the file on the server, it takes the audio data and just pushes it right back out on that HDMI cable. And if we look at the receiver, you'll see that we've got that true HD audio, the Atmos enabled, my speakers are all lit up, and everything is working just fine. So that is why 
uh, in our last video, the Shield was still the top dog when it comes to this stuff. But the Xbox, as we saw, is getting pretty close. It will handle the audio just fine. It's still having some trouble with the Dolby Vision side of things. So we're getting close to having some alternatives out there. And one thing some viewers pointed out with the Xboxes is that you do get a 4K Blu-ray player built into them in addition to all the gaming functionality. And so that's why I think the Xbox is going to be a great Plex client in the very near future once this Dolby Vision thing gets figured out. So stay tuned. We're going to have a full review of the new Apple TV coming up in the next couple of days. But I wanted to pull this Plex part out because I knew there was a lot of interest in it. And unfortunately, it's still not quite there for high-end Plex usage. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.